Okay, everyone, I have a fun project that we can do for extra credit in the class this week related to the Internet of Things, to the IoT. So one of the topics in chapter one is the Internet of Things. And I already talked about the Internet of Things are basically smart devices, small devices typically, that have Wi-Fi chips or wireless chips or cellular chips that allow them to be on the Internet and then can send, can read data, send data, upload data to the cloud, so on and so forth. Well, some popular IoT devices, small form factor devices that you'll see out there, are used by hobbyists and promote the creation of this type of activity. So some of these devices are like a Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi comes in a box like this, and it's called a single board computer. And this is what it looks like. It's a single board computer. It's about the size of a credit card but it's actually an entire computer just on one little card. So it's got four USB ports, it's got an ethernet port, it's got HDMI, it's got audio out. You power it on right here with like a cell phone charger. The hard drive is just a micro SD card right here. And the CPU, the microprocessor's here, and the RAM is here. And basically, this is a computer. You can plug a keyboard into it and a mouse and a monitor, and it has its own operating system and GUI, graphical user interface. It's got a start menu. It's got a web browser. It's an entire computer, just like Windows or Apple Mac OS, but it's small. And the interesting thing about it, though, is it's, it can be used for IoT-type projects because it's wireless, right? It's got built-in Wi-Fi. Also, it has these general purpose GPIO pins, input output pins, that can go digital out and digital in. So you could read information from let's say like a sensor, but you could also send electricity out of these pins to run a motor or to run a pump or to do all kinds of things, right? So you could build a project off this, an electronics project, let's say. Okay, and then another device, that's a single board computer. And that one costs like 30 bucks. And then this one is also a $30 investment. This is a microcontroller. It's an Arduino. So this Arduino is a microcontroller. It's not a Raspberry Pi, a single board computer. This microcontroller is meant to run a single program. So you write a program in C or C++, you upload it into the Arduino. The Arduino will run that program and it'll, it can talk to the input outputs, right? So you can plug in digital input outputs you can plug here like analog input, so you could read um, a continuous stream of information from an analog sensor, like a temperature read or something like that, barometric pressure or all kinds of sensors that are out there, right? And, um, and you can use this in electronics project. So I've recently done a bunch of these little projects. And to do that, you use a breadboard and the breadboard, you can plug wires into it. And then you plug these wires into the Arduino. And this one has a servo, which is kind of like a motor, but it, it turns, this wheel turns, which could turn like a robotic arm or something like this. And it turns as you flex this flex sensor. So I've designed it so that the sensor's right here. If I, if I bend this flex sensor, it will turn the robotic arm, it'll turn the servo. And then this all gets hooked up to the Arduino, and then you need to write a program that talks to those pins and sends the electricity out of the Arduino, but also reads voltage into the Arduino so you can read the sensor and then output to the motor. So I was thinking we could play with a project like this. Now we can't do it physically because we're not inside the class and I don't have a bunch of Arduinos to hand out and we're not face to face, but there is a simulator, a virtual simulator that you can do through a web browser. And that's what we're gonna do for a project right now. And if you create the project and you send it to me, I will give you extra credit, okay? So I just kind of wanted to turn this on to you. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna go to this website, tinkercad.com. And what you wanna do is you wanna set up a free user account. So I've got a free user account and I'm already logged in. Now tinkercad.com is created by Autodesk or AutoCAD. It's designed for kids, right? You can see here these little kids here who know way more than I do. Um, and you can do, they've got like this cool 3D program where you can create 3D 
um, shapes and uh, 3D objects in a very kind of user-friendly for kids type of modality. But it also has this circuit designer where you can create circuits, right? And with these circuits, it's it's just it's it's a hoot, right? So, but and you can see these are my projects, right? So I've got like these different circuits, and you can use the Arduino. So the Arduino is one of the objects that's been simulated, and you can have a breadboard, you can have the Arduino, and you can pull out electronic components, resistors, LEDs, diodes, integrated circuits, transistors, you name it, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a little project here, and if you wanted to follow along, I'll show you what to do. So I'll just hit Create New Circuit, and I'll just show you right away how easy it is to kind of get started. So like right away, I'm gonna grab a power source. So I'll scroll down and grab this nine volt battery, and then I will rotate it. Okay, so there's my nine volt battery. Okay, and this nine volt battery has the terminals, right? Like uh, positive uh, and negative, right? So there's positive and there's negative, okay? And you can see the red and the black, and then you can just, you can, you know, put wires on it. So I'm gonna undo that. Then, just to show you how it works, I'll grab a motor, I'll scroll down, grab a direct current motor, and I'll rotate that. And we'll just hook the wires from the um, positive to the positive. So notice here, you've got these terminals here, right? And there's the black terminal, so I'll go black to black. So negative to negative, and then I'll say positive to positive. Now notice the coloration is these green wires, but you can change the colors by clicking on the wire and then going over here. And so I'll change that wire to black and I'll change that wire to red. Okay, and then to basically, so now we have a circuit, right? We have a circuit of um, positive and negative, right? And we've completed the circuit. And if I hit start simulation, you'll see the motor is running. Now in reality, if I was to do this with a tiny little hobby motor, this motor would spin really, really fast and eventually burn up, right? It would just be too much. But this just kind of proof of concept, right? That there's the circuit working, turning the motor, right? The electrons are flowing across the circuit from negative to positive, right? The negatively charged electrons are flowing from negative to positive and conventional electronics conventional um, basically says that the flow is from positive to negative but I mean, the science says that electrons negatively charged will flow from um, negative to positive and then there's all this controversy about electronics but we're going to stop that simulation and then i'll just click click on this and delete it and then we can we'll, we'll do something else so this time i'll grab what I'll do is I'll grab a LED, okay? And this is another like kind of test scenario. So LED has two pins. Um, anode connects to the positive and cathode connects to the negative. So I'll click from here to here and switch that to black. Okay, and then I'll click from here to here. Whoops, and I didn't switch it. This one needs to be positive. So I'll make that red and this one connects to the black, so I'll make that black. Okay, so those are the wires connecting to the LED. Now watch what happens when I click Start Simulation. The light turns on, but then you see like this like um, explosion, right? Or this, this uh, dynamic uh, polygon bubble indicating that the LED has burned out. And it tells you that the current right now through the LED is uh, 915 milliamps, while absolute maximum is 20 milliamps. So there's too much electricity flowing through the LED and it's, it's burnt out. So we can fix that by stopping the simulation, okay? And what I'm gonna do is, is I'll grab a resistor. So we'll add a resistor to the mix to lessen the flow of electricity. So what I'll do is, so I'll take this black wire and I'll move it to the resistor Okay, and just to show you how this is, if I rotate this, right, so just so you kind of see it there, right, there's the LED, and then I'll connect from here to here. So now I complete the circuit. So now if the electricity is flowing from negative to positive, it goes through the resistor and goes through the LED. Now check this out. I can click on the resistor 
and I can change the amount of resistance, right? This is ohms, I guess this is kilo ohms. Right now it's one kilo ohm. And then I'll click start simulation, which basically means, you know, power on, and there's the light, the LED turning on with the resistor. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. All right, also what I could do is, is I can add another piece. So what I could do is I'll stop the simulation and I'll grab this slide switch, right? And the slide switch will open and close the circuit, right? It'll open and close the circuit. So what I can do is I grab this, I'll pull this off, set it to this, it has three prongs on the switch. And I'll set it to this left prong and then I'll do another one from here to here on the middle prong and then I'll leave the right prong or the right pin open, right? So then the switch, when it's uh, over here, it'll be, I think, closed circuit. And if I move the switch over to the other side, it'll be open circuit. I'll change the color of this. Okay, so you can kind of get the picture here, right? And so now we have this other, in our circuit, we have this other piece here, a switch. So I hit start, the light turns on, but if I slide the switch over, now I have an open circuit and electricity's off. So it's kind of just this fun tool for um, playing with circuits and um, experimenting with electronics, you know, maybe for kids, but actually it gets pretty, um, it can get, you know, can, you know there's a certain uh, element of complexity to it as well. So for instance, if I get rid of this now, I'll just delete these, press delete on my keyboard. Okay, and then what I'll do is, is I'll do the whole thing again, but this time I'm gonna use an Arduino. So I'll grab the Arduino. So there's my Arduino, my microcontroller, okay? And then I'm gonna get a breadboard. Grab the breadboard, okay, like that. And we're gonna set up the same circuit, but we're gonna use, we're gonna have the circuit go through the breadboard here, and then we're gonna have a program on the Arduino that sends electricity out of one of these digital pins and it sends the electricity to the LED and turns it on and off and blinks it. And that's what we're gonna do. So basically we still need the LED. We'll just drop the LED. You know, basically we'll drop it right here. Okay. And then we need a resistor. So we'll grab a resistor and I'll take the resistor and then I'll rotate it. Okay. And I'm gonna, now the way the breadboard works is, it's a pegboard, but underneath the underneath these holes of, and the plastic are metal rails. And so there's metal rails here. And you can, when you hover over, you can see where the rail would be. So any object, any pin or wire that plugs into this row right here will have a connectivity because it'll be touching the same little metal um, bar underneath. And these metal bars here at the top run horizontally. These run vertically, right? These run vertically, and these two at the bottom run horizontally. So what I'll do is I'm gonna align this up so that the resistor connects to the cathode, to the negative side, right? Or the ground side of the LED right there. Then I'm gonna run a wire from here to the this negative, which is usually for the intended for ground, right? So I'll run a wire from there to there, and maybe I'll make it black, just to indicate that this is ground. And then I'm gonna go from this corner right here over to the ground pin, and it says GND here for ground. Right? You can see it right there, GND. So now I've got ground to this rail, and then from this wire connecting to this rail, the vertical rail, which you know touches the resistor, the resistor connects in from the resistor to the um, LED, right? And it's causing connection here. We have a connection all the way through. All right, then on this side, I'm gonna need a wire that goes basically, you know, anywhere on this row, I can plug it in. So I'll plug it in, let's say like right here, and then I'm gonna plug it in over here to pin 12 on the digital input outputs up here, right? These are the analog inputs, right? This is for power, and these are digital in and digital out. So I'm putting it to pin 12, all right? So now, if I hit start simulation, 
we don't have power right now. The Arduino powers up, but we need to write a little program that will send electricity out of pin 12, out of this GPIO pin right here, out of pin 12 and onto our circuit. So we need a, we need a little program, right, basically. So what I'll do is, is I'll move this over. Also, I wanna color this wire. So let me color this wire red. Okay, so now we know that like, right, this is the positive to the anode, the cathode to the resistor, uh, the ground, cathode to ground, through the resistor, over to ground, right? And the flow of electrons goes from negative to positive. Now, we need our code. So we click on the code win button. You have Blockly. You can do the code in, in draggable, droppable blocks, blocks plus text, or just text. We're going to use just text. Click Continue, and you'll see here it gives us a default program. The default program is a tiny little program that is in C++, no, it's C code, at C programming code, and it has a function called setup function. It doesn't return anything, that's why it says void. So this, this function doesn't return anything. But this setup function, when the Arduino fires up and this program is uploaded into the Arduino, it'll run this function once. And it runs the pin mode built-in method here, or built-in function. It runs the pin mode, which sets the LED built-in. And the LED built-in is actually pin 13, which is a little blinking light right here and it sets it to be an output. So it sets that to be an output. Now what we want to do is we want to set up pin 12. So what we'll do is we'll say constant integer LED pin equals 12. So we set a variable named LED pin equal to 12. Then I'm going to change this from LED built-in, which basically resolves to 13. It's a variable that stands for 13 to LED capital P pin. And so I'm setting LED pin to an output pin. And since LED pin equals 12, I'm setting this, this 12 slot, right, this digital out, I'm setting it to output. So electricity will go out of here. All right. Then this function will run once, right? If we upload this program into the Arduino and we fire up the Arduino, it will run once. Then the loop function, it's also void so it doesn't return anything right it just runs this looping function will run over and over again and what we're going to do is we're going to digitally write electricity a one high voltage to led pin so i change that and then we're going to delay for 3000 milliseconds wait for 3000 milliseconds which is three seconds and then we're going to write to LED pin, and we're going to set the to low, and then we're going to wait for maybe 2,000 milliseconds. So basically, we're going to turn the light on, we're going to turn electricity on out here for three seconds, and then wait three seconds, and then we're going to take the electricity off of pin 12, and then we're going to wait for two seconds, and then it's going to go over and over, and it's going to run over and over again. So if I, there's my code, if I hit start simulation, the simulator uploads the program into the Arduino. The Arduino powers on, right? And right now you can see it's not connected here. This is a USB connection, right? This is, you see the, 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 uh, the little USB symbol. So like if we sit start simulation, it plugs in here, powers on the Arduino, uploads the program and runs the program. So, right, it'll run that program. So start simulation, right? Notice the Arduino powers on, the program got uploaded, and the light is turning on and off, right? It's off, now it's on for three seconds. Okay, now it's off and it waits for two seconds. Then it turns the voltage on and it waits for three seconds and so on and so forth. All right, now if we wanted to make this um, a little bit uh, more advanced, right, we could add a little more complexity by adding a push button. So the push button is gonna be interesting. We'll take the push button, we'll put the push button here, okay? Then the push button has two legs or two pins, one connected to this rail, another one connected to this rail. So we're gonna connect a wire from this rail over to pin two, 
over here, okay? And I'm just gonna color that, let's say, green, okay? So what's gonna happen is, is this is gonna send information to pin two, and we're gonna make this an input um, pin. So we're gonna read the information from the push button. It's gonna get sent into pin two as an input. All right, on this other leg or pin of the push button, we need to go to ground. So I'll, I'll just drag a wire to the, the this rail, which is connected to our ground, and then I'll change the color to black, okay? Also, this push button is going to need electricity. And since electricity is not gonna come from pin two, right, we're gonna actually send electrical current to pin two, we're gonna make this an input, then we need electricity to this button somewhere else. So for that, we can connect the five volt to the positive rail here, right? It's just positive because it has a little plus sign here, but it's just a metal rail. It's whatever you make of it. And then we'll color it red. Now this is, when this Arduino powers up, this little five volt here sends continuous electricity out. So this will continuously have electricity, five volts, onto this rail. And then we can basically, um, I want to dampen the electricity with a resistor. So I'll grab a resistor and I'll connect it from the rail to the row, right, to this vertical row connectivity to the push button. So now we're providing electricity, continuous electricity, to the push button, and then it goes out to ground. So we have a circuit here. So we have a little circuit here. Okay, also, we have a wire connecting to two, and what we can do is we can add a little piece to our program that checks to see if the push button has been pressed. And if it's been pressed, we'll change the voltage, we'll send voltage to pin two, okay? So yeah, so that's pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is I've got the program right here and I'll show it to you. I'll also post it into the Blackboard or into our learning management system so you can just copy the program and paste it. So the program is similar but slightly different. It looks like this. So now we have a variable button pin which equals two and we have a variable LED pin which equals 12. They're both integer variables. In other words, they get assigned a number. They don't get assigned text. They get assigned a, a whole number. And they're constants, so they don't change. So these two variables, they stay the same. Then we've got another variable that's an integer. It's not a constant. This, this one will change. It's gonna change from zero to one, right? It's gonna change from, from false to true. So button state is a variable and it will change, right? Right now it's zero, but it could also be a one. Then here's our setup function. Our setup function sets LED pin to be an output right here. This is the output, but it sends button pin, which is two, button pin equals two. It sends it to be an input. So this is an output and this is an input. Then in our loop, we say, this, remember this is gonna get, this will get run multiple times, right? It gets read over and over again. So it constantly it's gonna say, what is button state equal to? And it'll read whatever this pin is. Right now, it's set to zero, right? So re button state, it'll read whatever the button pin is, and it'll find out whether it's, it's a zero or a one, right? It'll read the input here. And if the button state equals low, right? And low, I think, stands for um, a, a, a one. In other words, when the button state is low, it means actually the button has been pressed, right? Then we write voltage to the LED pin. We write a one to the LED pin. Else, right, we take the LED pin and take the voltage off of the LED pin, right? And we could remove this low and high and low with zeros and ones if we wanted to. For a zero for, you know, false and a one for true, right, or zero for no and one for yes, right, basically, this low keyword and high keyword do the same thing, okay? And then if I start the simulation here, right, you'll see that we don't have a light on the LED, and if I press the button, I get the light, right? Bingo, okay, cool, right? And then if I stop the simulation and I change low, the button is pressed, so we'll change it to a one, then 
the LED pin gets a, let's say, um, LED pin, we'll say, gets a 1, and this gets a 0. We'll check to see if that works. It might be the opposite. Okay, see, it's on right now. Um, so I've got to stop the code. LED pin gets a 0, and this gets a 1, and start the simulation. And I press the button, you see the light turns off, I let go of the button, and the light turns off, the LED turns off. Right, so you can see that in the code, you know, ones and zeros also work. Or you can use, you know, low, which means the button's been pressed, this turns to high, and this turns to low. And I think that will work again. Let's see, start simulation, press, you get electricity, let go, you don't have electricity. Now, um, there it is, right? I can name it. I'll say, you know, LED with push button. And I can save it and I can share this. I can share this Tinker, um, I can ch uh, this Tinker circuit, Tinkercad circuit, and I can share it with other people by sharing the, um, sharing it and then other people can open it up and work with it. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'll share with you some of the projects that I've created and then you could open them up and you could check them out and you could start making your own projects. And it just has a ton of, right, so if I go to circuits, right, you can see all of my projects. I was trying to work with um, a lemon battery, right, because a lemon battery is one of the objects that you can create. In other words, if you create a new circuit here and you can see change components from basic to all, you'll see that there's just a ton of components that you can use. There's all kinds of sensors. This is a motion sensor, sound sensor, gas sensor, temperature sensor. Um, you've got um, you know, uh, resistors, capacitors, diodes, inductors. You've got um, dip switches. You've got um, you know, lights, LED lights, all kinds of pixel lights, motors, actuators. Right, micro server, hobby gear motor, um, you know, remotes, an LCD screen, and all different types of power sources: nine volt battery, coin battery, potato battery, lemon battery, solar cell. So just you know, there's tons of stuff to play with here, and a lot of people have done projects. There's tutorials. Here's integrated circuits, and here's um, transistors. Right, so I have some projects that I used a transistor, relays. Um, all kinds of things. All right, I hope you enjoyed this demo and that you're um, excited to start playing with uh, Tinkercad and and putting together your own projects. Um, you can just look up Arduino projects and even if you don't have an Arduino, you could probably do the whole project right here, right in Tinkercad and just do it simulated, right? Here, I'll show you one of my projects. So here is the there is the project that I transferred from physical to simulated. There's my Arduino. Here's my flex sensor, right? And here is the servo, right? Which is kind of like a, um, a motor. And if I hit start simulation, you see there, there's the servo. If I bend the flex sensor, you know, as I bend the flex sensor, it turns, it turns the arm, right? Isn't that cool? Right? And then you can look at the code. And you know, the code is, you know, it's you know just a few lines, right? That's it. But it and it's all the code is is not hard to learn. It's not hard to figure out kind of how it works and what's going on, but it gives you it's just a, it's just a fun project, right? Um, and I thought, hey, that's cool. I can do it and simulate it, and then other people can do it, and we don't have to be face to face. And we don't have to be in the room together and we can, you know, do that just virtually. All right. Have a good one.